Hi friends, and thank you for joining us on Linda's Electric Quilters on YouTube. I'm here with Corey Pearson, yep. and I'm Linda V. Taylor, and we're doing a really fun, magical project today. Tell us about what we're doing. So this was a um, unicorn pattern that was pieced by one of my really good friends, Joyce Lundergan. She is a fabulous designer uh, for Statler patterns, mm -hmm. um, but I wanted something uh, like this for a long time, and so she pieced it, sent it, and said, I can't wait to see what you do with it. You're so special. <laughs> what can I say? <laughs> so I thought, you know, I am coined as the Statler kid, mm -hmm. but I thought we'd just do nothing but freehand on this one today. Okay, let's so do that. I'd love to see some of your amazing designs. I'd like to try some too, but I know you said that you had a really cool idea for the background. So well, I, I think that, that we need to do a magical feather because feathers are magical. Okay. And so it needs to come in and kind of go in behind. Okay behind here and then Ooh, and we'll then show how to bring one. it out. Oh, yeah. I'd love to see that. So it, you don't, you can kind of, it just looks like it's behind there. Just kind of flows with it. Yep, so let's do that in constant. Okay. So we'll just start. All righty. All right. So I think before we get started stitching, I think it'd be really good to explain why we use the type of battings that we did. Okay. Um, so I just have this on a piece of muslin because we're actually going to turn this into a pillow. Oh, cool. Which is going to be a lot of fun. So, because you can make even it even better. Full, you know, do a pillow on your long arm, which is great. So, it's just on some regular muslin. But I've got Linda's Choice as the bottom, that 100% cotton with scrim. It's nice and heavy. It gives mm -hmm. it that nice flat look. And then I've also got um, this is new from Hobbs, their Tuscany Supreme cotton. So, it's 100% cotton, yeah, but this doesn't have a scrim, but it's nice and thick. Yes. So, it gives it beautiful texture. So, this is nice and flat, but it also kind of gives it that faux trapanto look due mm -hmm. to this. Mm -hmm. And then, when I did the stitch in the ditch, I used um, an Omni, one of their grays by Superior. Um, and I did the dark gray, because normally most people, they want to try to use the same color thread they on the stitch. They match. They yes, want to match it. Especially for stitch in the ditch. Right. But I thought, well, I'm going to use a darker gray to give each of these ribbons some shadowing naturally. Mm -hmm. um, and so people are normally afraid to go from a con to a contrasting thread when they're doing stitch in the ditch. But if you do that, it gives it some really nice shadowing. It kind of separates everything apart. So I thought that'd be a cool way. You to did a really great job stitch in the ditch too. I try. Are you <laughs> all, for, are you all for sale? <laughs> <laughs> all Statler. <laughs> okay, all right. All right, so what are we drawing up? All right. We're gonna come in with a feather and then come out the other side and so it's just seamless. Okay. Again, I'm going to I'm going to use a chalk pencil. It's just this pastel chalk pencil and it's it's easy to erase and it's hopefully I can see it on this gray. But I kind of want to see where I'm going to come with this feather because I I definitely want it to extend so that it it's going to look like it's coming right out of the head here and then we'll come over here. So I'm going to get my stems in there like that, and then I can put my feathers on it. There we go. Coming right up to your stitch in the ditch, I'm just going to skip over a little bit there. Come right back down so I have a nice stem. And I don't care if that stem is exactly a quarter of an inch. It's more magical if it is. Exactly, yeah. <laughs> And then we'll start doing our feather. And we are doing the stitching back on that feather like that. You see how I come clear deep back inside? Mm -hmm. Makes such a pretty, pretty feather. The other thing you can do, since we know we're going to echo it, mm -hmm. is actually to echo instead of stitching back on it. Oh, okay. Okay, now I'm going to, I didn't like that last feather. Actually, what I wanted to do was just come up to that line and stop. Oh, and pick that little feather. That's Is that fine. okay? It's Oops. unique. All right, yeah, it's definitely <laughs> unique. So I'm gonna come back by echoing, and I'm doing deep echoes, so I go right into that intersection. Like that. And I might even put something in those feathers when they come back, but let's get our other feather in first. I'll move my other hand out.
Boy, this extra thick batting is just a dream. Mm-hmm. I love the look that it's giving us. And we just stop like it's going to go, like it's going underneath. And uh -huh. I will pick that one there. Um, and you do a lot of echoing on the feathers. Nobody can tell if you've done three or two. Or, you know what? Nobody cares, <laughs> as it turns out. Let's just come in and put some stems in these. We want to make sure that they're like little curly curly stems. Mm -hmm. I might even put a texture dot or two in there. Maybe not in every one, but... Adding that little stem or little texture dot really changes the look of the feather. Well, it does. It also kind of pounds it down through the middle so that it come, when it comes out, it has a little bit more fullness. Right. So the texture, it changes the texture for sure. It's awesome. This time I won't come out as far because I am going to put an end on that feather. But as I come over here, all I need to do is come out with that first feather like that. Then trace it back. And then over. And I'll make these a little bit more magical. Are unicorns all girls or boys? Or are they both? They're both. They're both. We're just going to follow that line down again, come over here, and just come out here like this. Okay. Follow that back. This feather right here mm -hmm. is going to be a princess feather. Okay. Has a tiara on it. Oh, look at that. And again, we can put stems in them. Yeah, all of that texture around the stem is just amazing. Mm -hmm. Let's just do a nice little... You want to see that again? Yeah. That is my finger feather, you know. Go all the way around and, and then come down. back. Oh, I love that. Isn't that cool? Hard to do this with one hand, sorry. <laughs> that looks great. All right, see that just kind of gives it a little poppy things here and there. Yeah. Maybe I'll pop some over there. And um, then what are you gonna do around the outside? So I'm thinking in the background, I just wanna do some straight line quilting. Well, that would be a very good contrast to the feather. So you um, put in this beautiful feather that kind of continued behind the unicorn and I really didn't want to take away from that feather so I decided let's just do some straight line quilting in the background mm -hmm. and since we're doing this all freehand I decided that I needed um, some of your crosshatch circles <laughs> in order to get that spacing the correct way. Oh they're so good for spacing. Oh I love them. Unreal. So we're doing the three quarter inch one Okay. and so it just goes right through the center there and then plops right down on it. It's perfect. Okay. I know I just love these. <laughs> So what I'm going to do 
is I'm doing 10 stitches to the inch to kind of match what you were doing constant. I didn't okay. want to do anything more than that because it would really kind of confuse the quilting. Um, so I'm turning my channel lock off. I'm going to come down to where the top of this crosshatch circle is at the top of that last quilting mm -hmm. line. Turn my channel lock back on, do some single stitches, and then start stitching and I am in regulated mode. So we're just going to go across this. I'm making my way down until I get to this piece of the unicorn. I'm going to stop it, come over to where I need to continue quilting, do a few ties, and continue stitching on. When I get to the end here, I'll turn my channel lock off, come down to where the top of that crosshatch circle is at the top of the last line, channel lock back on, and then I'm going to come this way slowly. All you have to do is make sure that you're really on that line, you know, so that each time, so that it's very right. even. Right. Yeah. And then I'll just come back and trim those threads on the top later. Oh, yeah. And the back of it, you don't have to worry about. Because exactly, because no one's going to see it. It'll be the that's pillow. That's right, it's the pillow. <laughs> so we're getting to your feather here. So I'm going to stop when I get to the feather. Move to where I need to. Do a few tie-offs. Continue. There's the feather again. Come over here. A few single stitches and start again. Beautiful. This is going to be amazing. Turn off that channel lock. Come down. Make sure my spacing's correct. Turn it back on and make my way back across. I'll stop right there. And this one's actually gonna go all the way to here. Until I get it to right there, we'll stop, jump over a little bit, stitch, and go. And we're just gonna do that all the way down. And you could do this on a whole quilt. Oh yeah. Yeah. That way you wouldn't even have to jump over and Nope, <laughs> just go back and <laughs> forth. <laughs> and I've seen a lot of them done that way. So we'll stop, jump over, a couple stitches, and then start stitching again. We'll get to your feather. Jump. Start again. All right, so Linda and I are just gonna start doing some fun freehand designs, and I'm gonna go first, because I'm gonna do ribbon candy. Okay. Really easy to do. <laughs> um, and we'll just, we'll just alternate playing around, so I'm just gonna pull up my bobbin thread real quick. And I am in constant speed, uh, 15. Do some single stitches to lock it down. And let's do this. I'm just doing something back and forth. And we're using a, a Fantastico thread. It has a nice little sheen to it, and it also is a rainbow as well, so it kind of goes with all of these colors. And I'm just going back and forth. Good job. Thanks. That was perfect for that little spot. And then we'll just have it continue Alternate. on. You can go down. Okay. Since this is a pink one, I'm going to use a piece of tape here, and hopefully this is going in the middle. Looks like it is. Like that. Okay. And then I'm going to start. Okay, I don't like that coming up, so I'll push that down a little bit. I know, it looks like I'm doing a feather. Half of a feather. Oh, so fun. This is good for sashings too. I'm right down there. Now I'm going to move the, the tape off and I'll come up the other direction and you can see I am making hearts. Oh, that's so cute. <laughs> Doesn't look like I got it in the middle as much as I wanted, but it's okay. Your turn. All right, I'm just gonna go ahead and do some swirls uh, with a little bit of an echo to it. So we'll come up here.
It's going in and out. I'm not super perfect at freehand, but I'm giving it a shot. You don't have to be perfect at freehand, Corey. <laughs> we, you don't have to be perfect at all. That's why it's freehand, and it's your freehand, so it's okay. your art. So don't. It's my you own little have to unique apologize. piece. <laughs> never. Your turn. Okay. All right. This one is like use, you, you, you. You have to really keep it in the U shape uh -huh. and follow the side like that. And when we get to the middle, which we're not, I can't even tell where the middle is. I should have marked it, but that's okay. I think I'm getting there. You're almost there, yeah. Okay. Then I'm going to do a beautiful little pinwheel, and that reverses my design. And this makes such a nice, um, even space. You can put this on a really busy fabric, Corey, mm -hmm. because it gives you texture. Yeah. It shows up, and I mean, you could spend a lot of time doing really cool stuff on that, but it wouldn't show up at all. But this, this will show up because it's texture. Okay. Fun. All right, I think I'm going to do um, kind of like a peacock feather. Let's see how this one turns out. Um, so we'll start in there, and then you build on top of it. On that one, build there and build on it. And if you miss a spot, come and fill it in. Build on it. Never any pressure. No, not at all. <laughs> <laughs> Not at all. No pressure. Just have Linda Taylor sitting right next to me. <laughs> no pressure. <laughs> That's just because you were a little boy when you met me, see? I know. Yeah, you were an adult. Adults are not afraid of me. <laughs> <laughs> the pressure's on when I'm doing the freehand. Now, when it comes to Statler, you yeah. might feel a little pressure. <laughs> oh, I never feel pressure. I'm always excited to learn new things. I consider myself to be a very user-friendly Statler person. <laughs> Just figure it out, even though there's probably lots of easier ways. at the bottom here. There we go. It kind of feels like um, dueling freehand or something. <laughs> you know? <laughs> I'm just going to follow that line up like that. Come back over and over. Ha. <laughs> <laughs> it's my holly something or other. <laughs> oh boy. Um, what to do now? <laughs> Stipple. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know what else to do. Okay. I only do a few things. <laughs> Want to get out one of my books? Yeah, probably. <laughs> <laughs> All right, go ahead, Rick. All right. I'm just gonna do a stipple. Now I'm losing okay. <laughs> my design arsenal. <laughs> Actually, stippling is really good, and a lot of people cannot do it and it's simply because they haven't practiced. Right. If you practice it, you can do it. Just put some dots was, on a paper and stipple around them. There was one of your videos, and I know you th you've done so many, so I don't expect you to remember it, but you, you were talking about stippling. You said there were only like two rules to stippling. Yeah, no three points rules. Don't cross. Don't, no points. And try not to get into a pattern. 
unless you want it to be a pattern, which is called pattern meandering. So, yeah, there's an art to it. Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> oh, this is turning out really nice. Now we're getting longer ones, mm -hmm. aren't we? Okay, I have a good one for this one. And it's similar to the one that I did over here, but it's uh, really tricky and it's kind of fun. It's, okay. okay, so I'm going to start with a pinwheel this time. Come in here like this with your use, okay? okay. And if it's not looking like this, then you're not doing the use. All right. Now, when I feel like I'm getting into the center, which is probably about right now. Yep. Then I'm going to go one, two, three. And then as I come back, I'm going to go this way and cross those ones in the middle. Ah. And that reversed my direction. Gotcha. Isn't that awesome? Yeah. The other thing you can do with this is make it dimensional as you get, you know, you could put your tape there and go a little, wise, a little while for half inch and then a little while for quarter inch and then eight as you get near to your pinwheel uh -huh. and then back out so it's pretty cool I use this so much yeah. that's it your turn no <laughs> come on one more turn all right so I'm just gonna do half of a feather um, so I will start here come up and in here Ooh, a little bit of a wider one there. <laughs> <laughs> That's okay. Nice. Yep. That's cute. We come up this side. Just follow what I've done before on the other side there. Okay. Like that. Now I'm going to come across. So cute. You could make it a lot denser. But you took all of our time. <laughs> <laughs> Just kidding. That is cute, isn't That's it? That's cute. So we have these last few up here. I think I have a design idea for this one, but I think I want you to do it. Oh, okay. <laughs> um, but you know, like if, whenever you're seeing things about unicorns, there's always magic from the from their horn. Mm -hmm, I think mm -hmm. you should do stars in there. It's always shooting out star magic. Oh, <laughs> stars. Stars, yep. Like just regular. The cross stars? Yeah, the cross stars, yeah. Oh, you know, okay. Nothing too fancy. Sure. But some cross stars. And then in these, we can figure it out as we go. Okay. Okay, Corey wants his stars all the way across, so let's put some stars in. And we follow this up here. I think we can do this. Is that what you had in mind, Corey? Like perfect. It's even better than I had in mind. Oh, that's always good. <laughs> <laughs> and they're going to get teeny. 
Look at that. So cute. That was oh, a good idea. And most everybody can do these stars. Yay. There we go. Okay. Okay, I'm going to do this little one and this one to Corey, okay. and then you get to do those. How's oh, that? Yay. Okay. <laughs> All right. This one, I'm just going to do just very simple in there like that. Okay. And then this one, I'm going to come over and do as evenly as I can. Some nice little swirls, which you're good at those swirls because you go in far enough. So many people don't go in all the way. Right. In all the way. In all the way. And then I'm coming back and I'm doing a dip, deep echo in all the way around here. And then I'll swing back over and come back over and do an echo on this other side. And it looks cool. Perfect, yeah. Yep. Now. All right, pressure's on, final ones. Yep, yep, <laughs> it's your unicorn. Okay, um, so I'm going to do some figure eights. So I'll start here. Boy, I really like this thread on there too. Oh, it turned out Perfect so, thread. so good for it. I have one, I have one. Okay, I'm sure. <laughs> <laughs> what is it? Go up the middle of it. Up the middle here? Uh-huh. Okay. And then, yeah, stitch up the middle. Yeah. Okay, now come over with a curve. Okay, come down, and you're going to do a fern on both sides. Come down. What? You want me to do one side, then you do the yeah. other? Yeah. Okay, <laughs> all right. He's not sure what I'm doing. We're just having fun with our roller chairs, actually. Like this. Oh, I'm with you now. Okay. Okay. You just kind of curve over like that. So fun. But I would go up again and come down because going up, uh, doing the fern, mm -hmm. I mean, I've had 27 years practice and I still can't do it as well as I can when I come down. You come down so I just go up that up stem it. again. Okay. Yeah. So and let then me come try. Down. So I'm just give you some of those hints. It. Since you're such a youngster. <laughs> I'll stitch up it and then just over. And remember to follow down. Follow, follow the down. stem. There you go. Follow the stem. There you go. You never want to come back perpendicular. Perfect. Just like that. Very good. Yay. Super fun quilting duo. Right. Today. It was a lot of fun playing yeah. with different freehand techniques. Hope you got a lot of good ideas. Make sure you give this video a thumbs up, subscribe to our channel, and share this with your friends. Bye.